Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many are blessed this morning? Yeah. Man, I was restricted not to say any freebies this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we'll see, amen. We'll see what, how God leads us. Hallelujah. How many are blessed? How many love the Lord? For another day of living, amen. You know, a lot of times we just take that for granted. You know, the breath of life that God gives us. Amen. And a lot of times we just need to realize that every day is a new day. That every day, you know what, we can forget about yesterday, last week, last month, last year. And we start brand new every day. So this morning we start brand new. Isn't that a good thing? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. For who you are, God, the creator of heaven and earth, for creating us in your image and making a way that we could be saved through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, how many know that this month is the first month of April? Now, to some people, it doesn't mean nothing. And to some people, it does mean something, right? It, it's something that... that uh, uh, we're going to hear a lot of uh, different sermons, teachings about Easter, right? Starting from, uh, you know, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, throughout the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, to you and I, Easter should be celebrated every day. Well, a few people believe that. The rest of us are still not confused a little, right? Easter should be celebrated every day by you and I. Because we should be grateful and thankful every day. Not just once a year on Easter Sunday. Can you say amen? Now the definition of Easter from the Wikipedia. <laughs> See, I can't say that's a, but it is a freebie. <laughs> Easter is a Christian festival and a cultural holiday commemorating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, described in the New Testament as having occurred on the third day of his burial following the crucifixion by the Romans at Calvary, the year 30 A.D. Amen. Now, I want to minister this morning on happy Resurrection Day. He is risen. Now, how many would agree that Easter means different things to different people? Right? Now, how many know that Easter is the most important and the oldest festival of the Christian church in celebrating the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that is held in the Western church world between March the 21st and April the 25th? On the first Sunday after the full moon, first full moon. Now, I'm not going to get into all the customs, symbols, traditions, and, you know, of Easter and all that. I'm going to try to teach a little bit, which is kind of hard for me. But, amen, Easter, for you and I, should mean, I'm going to try to paint a picture, uh, four, four pictures for you. Amen. The first one, my first point is the road to Calvary. Amen. Easter should be first the road to Calvary. That's where Jesus endured the agony, the, the, the torment, the torturing, the whipping, the suffering, the punishment that led Jesus to the cross of Calvary. That's where he was stripped of his clothing and he was nailed to the post. Amen. And then... The Roman uh, legionnaire, legionnaire stepped forward with something called a flag rum. How many know what a flag rum is? The flag rum is simply uh, a short whip consisting of several uh, heavy uh, uh, 
leather straps with two small uh, balls of lead attached to the end of each other. Then the heavy whip was brought down with a lot of force again and again on the torn and bloody back of Jesus. Then when the centurion determined that Jesus was near death, the beating stopped. And Jesus had fainting, they untie him and allow him to slump down on the cold pavement, wet with his own blood. Are you getting the picture? And as they continue to mock him, abuse him, putting the crown of thorns on his head, they're looking at it as a joke and begin to mock him until they get tired. Now in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, the Bible says, According to the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin or remission. Unless there's, you know, blood shed or offered, how many know there's no remission of sin? Now let me say this. It's not water, in case you, you know, think it's water, you know, holy water is sprinkled on you, or, you know, water baptism. It doesn't forgive sin. The Bible says that it's what? It's through the precious blood of Jesus Christ that you and I are forgiven of our sin. It releases the guilt and the punishment of our sin. It's the precious blood that was shed for you and I this morning. Amen. Amen. That's, what G that's what Easter is about. Now as we look back as Jesus being led on the road to be crucified, we see that they make him carry his own cross, tying it across his shoulders. And all the weight of that heavy cross, together with all the blood that he has lost, it's too much for him to carry, so he stumbles and he falls. And that rough wood of the cross penetrates into his skin, the muscles of his shoulder. He tries to get up, but his human muscles have been pushed beyond his endurance. Matthew tw uh, chapter 27, verse 32, the Bible says, As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon. And they forced him to carry the cross. They forced him. He didn't want to do it. He's just walking by. You know what? Hey, come here. And you know, I, I don't want to get involved. They forced him. Listen, Simon was made to bear the cross of Jesus when Jesus was actually bearing Simon's cross by dying in his place. Wow. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, when they came to this place called Galgeldia, meaning the skull or Calvary, here the cross was placed to the ground, and Jesus was quickly thrown on his back with his shoulders against the wood. And then the legionnaire begins to feel for the softest part on the front of his wrist. Then he drives a square iron nail through the wrist, deep into the wood. Quickly, he moves to the other side, repeat, repeats the same thing, being careful not to pull the arms too tightly, but to allow the flexing and movement or else he would die quickly. They didn't want him to die quickly. They wanted him to suffer, to feel the pain. Come on. The cross then is lifted up to place at the top of that post, and the cross, the sign, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews, is nailed in its place. The left foot is pressed against the right foot. And with both feet extended, tied down, a nail is driven through the arc of each foot. Are you getting the picture? Come on. Now, despite the agony and the pain that went through his body, Jesus is looking down. Come on. He's looking down, and he's saying, forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they're doing. Wow. Listen, the heart of his love, even at that time, thought of others 
and reaching down with words of forgiveness. Wow. Come on. Are you getting it? Going through the pain, everything, and he's still reaching out with this love of forgiveness. Then we see the soldier gambling for what? For the clothing. And when they did this, they fulfilled the prophecy which said in Psalms 22, 14 through 18, My strength is gone, gone like water spilled on the ground. All my bones were out of joint. My heart is melted like wax. My throat is dry as dust, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have left me for dead in the dust. An evil gang is around me like a pack of dogs. They close in on me. They tear at my hands and my feet. All my bones can be seen. My enemies look at me and stare. They gamble for my clothes and divide it among themselves. Wow. Listen. If you take the road of Calvary out of the gospel, you have no gospel to preach. Because it's Christ's sacrifice on Calvary that redeems us from our sin. Now, it was at the ninth hour when Jesus cried with a loud voice. And he said, Eli, Eli, lama samatani, which is, my God, my, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out to his father as for the first and only time the Godhead, the Trinity, are separated as Jesus bears the sins of the world. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy in Psalm 69, 21. They poisoned my food with gall. That means bitterness, sourness. And gave me vinegar to quench my thirst. Then he cried out, it is finished. Father, I give my spirit into your hands. Then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Wow. Amen, amen. The road to Calvary. Come on. Second picture, then the cross. In other words, Jesus came to pay the debt that he did not owe. Because we owe the debt that we could not pay. And Jesus paid it in full for you and I this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. See, our sin, our sin is what led Jesus to the cross. Now, how many know we all have a list of different sins, don't we? And we are all guilty of sin, right? See, sin was the reason why Jesus had to be crucified. But thank God that he nailed all of our sins to the cross once and for all. Jesus paid the price for our sins on that cross. Paul puts it this way. You were dead in sins and your sinful desires were not, let, or were not yet cut away. Then he gave you a share in his very life of Christ. For he forgave all your sins and blotted out the charges proved against you. The list of his commandments which you have not obeyed. Now listen, you should underline height like this. He goes on to say, he took that list of sins. Your sin, my sin, the sins of the world. And destroyed it by nailing it. To the cross of Christ. Come on. That's chapter uh, 3 verses 13 14 of Colossians. Listen. The empty cross this morning promises forgiveness. After six hours of agony upon that cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Come on. What makes these words meaningful and powerful is that the Greek words... Amen. It is finished when it's translating. It means an accounting term that means paid in full. It's a done deal. It's been completed. There's nothing else that you and I can add or do to what Christ already did on that cross. Come on. Now, when Jesus said those words, it is finished, it meant that he wiped or, yeah, wiped away all our debts of sin. He paid a debt that you and I could never pay. 
That's what the empty cross promises. Forgiveness of all of our sins. After this, man, Jesus gave up the spirit. How many know that Joseph and Nicodemus were both Pharisees who secretly believed in Jesus and they went and request permission from Pilate to bury the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. Joseph supplied the tomb and Nicodemus supplied the spices, fulfilling what the scripture says in nine, uh, John 19, 40. Says following the Jewish uh, burial custom, they wrapped Jesus with spices and long sheets of linen cloth. Wow. The third picture I want to paint for you guys this morning of Easter is the empty cross. I mean the empty cave. The empty tomb. Now we know that Mary and some of the women went to the tomb. And they found it empty, right? And they stood there for a while. And suddenly, the Bible says, that angels appeared to them and announced to them in Matthew 28, verses 5 and 6, they say, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus, the one who has been crucified. But he's not here. He has risen from the dead as he said he would. And then he tells them, come, see the place where he was laid, where he was. Wow. He has risen. He's not here. His body was there, but he's not there no more. Listen, to this day, the tomb of Jesus remains empty as a symbol of life that outlasts the grave. In other words, the empty cave promises eternity, everlasting life forever. Wow, I don't know if you really understand that. You know what eternity means? Everlasting? Forever? Our minds can't fully understand or grasp what that really means. But yet, throughout the Bible, Jesus promised eternity and eternal life over and over. Wow. Think about it. Eternity forever and ever. We really can't fully understand that, can we? He tells Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he that believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. He assured the woman at the well, those who drink the water that I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. John 14, 4, 14. He tells the crowds, in John 6, 47, for it is my Father's will, underline that, it's my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him shall have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Listen, most people today, they hope for what? For a long, happy life, right? Here on this earth. But Jesus offers you and I more than that. He offers us life to reign with him forever for eternity. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, the promise of eternal life is the heartbeat of our hope. As Christians, right? Isn't that what we long for? What we're looking forward to? The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Romans 6, 8 through 10. And since we die with Christ, we know, do you know? We know that we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him because when he died, he died once and for all to break the power of sin. The life he lives, he lives to God. Wow. Listen, the empty cave serves as a powerful reminder 
that Christ rose from the dead never to die again. The empty cave promised eternal life to those that put their faith to the one that conquered death. Woo. Man. Hallelujah. The last point I want to bring or paint for you is the power of the resurrection. Do you know there's power in the resurrection this morning? Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the death. How many know? How many want to go to heaven? How many want eternal life? The Bible says we're going to be part of that. But we're also going to be part of his sufferings. See, nobody wants to be part of his sufferings, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Billy Graham said this. Once, Billy Graham once told Time Magazine, he said, if I were an enemy of Christianity, I would aim right at the resurrection because that is the heart of Christianity. Did you get that? He said, if I'm going to come against Christianity of you guys being a Christian, I'm not going to talk about all these other doctrines. I'm going to just come against the resurrection. You know why? Because there's power in the resurrection. Hallelujah. Listen, Easter and everything Jesus went through and everything Jesus did, I mean, no, it's useless, it's meaningless without the resurrection. Think about it. Well, you're probably saying, well, give me some scripture. Okay. I'll give you some scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. The Bible says, and if Christ be not risen or raised, then your faith is in vain and you are still in your sins. Whoa. Come on. If it wasn't for the power and the resurrection, if Jesus was not risen from the dead, then you and I are still in our sins. Our faith is in vain. Come on. But how many know that Jesus rose from the dead he's alive today glory to God and he's coming back for you and I that is our blessed hope see Romans chapter 6 verse 3 through 5 says be not ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death we have therefore been buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory and power of the Father, we too might walk habitually in the newness of life, abandoning our old ways. For if we have become one with him, permanently united in the likeness of his death, we will also certainly be one with him and share fully in the likeness of the resurrection. Woo! Come on. Some of you guys need to be resurrected right now. Come on. Just to lay hands and bring you back alive. Hallelujah. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 to 57. So then when this corruptible body puts on incorruptible body, and this mortal should put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abide in the work of the Lord, 
For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Come on. Listen. Do you want victory over sin? Over the grave? Because that's the power and victory that Jesus offers you and I, amen, in the resurrection. Wow. Now, did you know that it's the resurrection power of Jesus that makes Christianity different, unique than all the world religions? Do you know that? So I want to take you on a little trip. Amen. To the tomb. To the different tombs. Amen. Of the founders of some of the great world religions. And let's listen as we take a roll call. Amen. So just picture with me. You got to use your imagination. You know how you did when you were in the world and you, you know, your imagination went everywhere else. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. So let, let's take a little trip. Amen. And we're going to go to the cemetery, and there's going to be different graves here, and we're going to take roll call. Let's go to the tomb of Muhammad, and we're going to call them out. Muhammad, here. Buddha, here. Confucius, here. Moses, here. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's no answer. Why? Because he's not there. The tomb is empty. He's risen. Hallelujah. The power of the resurrection. Jesus is risen. He's alive. Come on. He conquered the grave and he conquered death. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, you can doubt it if you want to. But the tomb is still empty because he's not there. He's risen just like he said he would. Hallelujah. This morning, we need to be thankful. We need to be grateful for all the pain and suffering that Jesus endured and overcame on that road to the cross. It was on the cross that Jesus paid the price for all of our sins and the sins of the world, our sins of the past, our sins of the present, and our sins of the future. Come on. So that we can live eternity with him. Listen, Jesus has paid in full the price of salvation. So that you and I can be reconciled back to him. And guess what? It's free. That's a freebie. Come on. From God to you and I. Sorry, I had to throw it in there. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was only two. I try to keep it to none, but help us, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Amen. Let me bring this down to a close. Illustration. Let me share an illustration. Someone said, Easter is a beautiful reminder that no matter what seems to be dead in your life, in your dreams, your faith, your family, your marriage, know that God can bring and give new life through the power of the resurrection. Come on. I believe God wants to raise some things in our lives this morning, in our lives, some marriages, our families, our faith, our dreams. Amen. And it's through the power of the resurrection. That's what Easter is all about, bringing back life from the dead. Stand to your feet with me this morning, if you may. Hallelujah. This morning is a great day to stop doubting and start believing. Amen. Stop doubting and start believing. You know that Jesus died. There's no doubt about that. You know that he died for you and I and for this whole world. You know that he rose from the dead. So the question that God is asking you and I is very simple. 
What are you going to do with my son, Jesus Christ, this morning? Are you going to accept him or reject him? How many know we need to stop doubting and start believing? Listen, I made up my mind that I'm all in on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That he died, amen, on the third day and he rose from the dead. I'm all in. How about you this morning? How about you this morning? Happy Resurrection Day. He is risen. He is risen. He is alive. Amen. Give God a clap offering. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning you're here. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Listen. The Bible says that God loves you. That he gave heaven's best. Heaven's best for you and I. Maybe you're here and you've fallen away. And you know what? You're not all in. You have loud doubt, unbelief, and everything else. The cares of the world to drift you away. How I many know there's power in the resurrection? God wants to bring life back into you. If you're here, you've never accepted the Lord and you want to accept him, I want to give you the opportunity, amen, to come. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to come if that's you. Or if you want to recommit your life to the Lord. You know you're not living right. You know you have fallen away. Come on. God wants to bring you back. He wants to restore, restore that relationship. Amen. He did it for you and I on that cross. He shed his blood to forgive us of our sins. And he rose from the dead to give you victory so you can continue to serve the Lord. If that's you, amen, I want to ask you to come. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. With that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask those that are sick. You know, God really put it in my heart to, to pray for the sick this morning. Amen. By His stripes we are healed. The Bible says. And the Bible says that if there's anyone, even that's sick, to call the elders of the church and let them lay hands on you. If you're sick in your body. Come on. The blood that was shed. I'm going to ask you to stand here. We're going to pray for those that are sick. Those that want, amen, to be prayed for. For healing. For healing in your body. doesn't matter what, what sickness, disease, affliction in your body. Amen. We serve the great physician, the doctor of doctors. Amen. We're going to believe. We're going to believe for those that are sick. Amen. Those that are sick. I want to pray for them. Hallelujah. And then we're going to pray for those that want prayer for anything else. But right now, we're gonna, you know, we want to pray for those that are sick. Amen. I'm going to ask some of the leaders to come and help us pray. Amen. For those that are sick. If you're out there, amen. And, you know, we just want to ask you to agree with us. Agree with us. You know, stretch your hands out and, and help us. Amen. To, to pray or come and, and get behind someone. Amen. And pray. Amen. We have some oil here and we're going to lay hands on those that are sick. Amen. Let's begin, amen. I'm going to ask the pastors, amen, the Bible study leaders, amen, to come and help us pray, amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray, church.
Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a risen God, don't we? A risen God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Easter is about giving life. Amen. Giving life and touching. Amen. If there's anyone else that wants to be prayed for, for anything, if you're going through some hard times, some trials, tribulations, Amen. Before we close, amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, sing that song with me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives come on you got better at the end of the song sing it again because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone come on because i know because i know i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Father, we thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for a message. Lord, right on to what this month is all about, Lord. A, a resurrected Savior, Lord. And the life that you gave to us, Lord. Help us, not just this month, but as we listen to these messages, help us to walk that walk, to live that light, to let that light shine out in the world. Because the world only knows darkness. Lord Jesus, help us bring that light to this world. We thank you for your truth this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said...